I'ma crush it, call me. Hi. I'm Anthony Walker, friend of the city and your host of Unsung, our region's nonprofit online news magazine show. This episode, we're coming to you from the beautiful South Park, out enjoying the leaves changing and the beautiful nature. But you won't find Kyle, Kenny, Cartman, or Stan here. Today, Unsung visit Lachlan's Children's Center in Sewickley to see firsthand how they have transformed the historic space into a bright and modern place for kids. October is also Domestic Violence Awareness Month, and we have a first-hand story to encourage you to get involved. But first, let's take a look at the news and happenings from around the area. Recent high-profile shootings in Pittsburgh have prompted local artist Vanessa German to print 600 more of her anti-violence yard signs. 500 of the signs will keep the slogan, Stop Shooting, We Love You, and 100 other signs will say, Stop Shooting, Live, Love, Respect. Recently, three people were shot after a dispute in a stands during a youth football game at Pittsburgh Obama Academy. Additionally, a 16-year-old was shot and killed in Garfield in a separate incident. I think the shootings have really galvanized some people, German said. I keep getting requests for more signs. I think this hits closer to home, literally. German has already printed 1,000 signs, distributing them throughout the region and into Baltimore, New Orleans, and Philadelphia. The signs will be available at the Pittsburgh Center for the Arts at 6300 Fifth Ave and Operation Better Block at 801 North Homewood Avenue. Donations are welcome. John Wettenhall, who became President and Chief Executive Officer of Carnegie Museums less than two years ago, will leave his post at the end of the year and return to Florida. The announcement came last week from Lee Foster, Chair of the Museum's Board of Trustees. Mr. Wettenhall, who took over in March 2011, will present his strategic plan for the four museums that make up the Carnegie. The Natural History, the Art, the Carnegie Science Center, and the Andy Warhol Museum at a board meeting next month. His successor will be David Hillenbrand, who served for five years as president of Carnegie Museums before Wettenhall's arrival. A life trustee, Mr. Hillenbrand will become interim president in January 2013. Also, don't forget to vote. On November 6th, you will participate in democracy by choosing the leaders for your local, state, and federal governments. Don't give up this vital role in our country by not voting. Now, let's toss it out to Christopher out in Swickley, PA with this week's feature. Hey, Anthony, I feel just like a kid today. I'm back at school here at the Lachlan Children's Center in Swickley, Pennsylvania. We're here to learn about the wonderful past of this organization and its bright future in front of it. And Doug Flory is going to take us on a tour. Well, Christopher, this is the lobby of our 1956 building. Um, it was built specifically for Lachlan Children's Center. But the organization itself stretches back to 1897. Uh, so we have three departments, academics, psychology, and speech. The academic department um, does evaluations of kids um, pretty much school age all the way up through high school. We have a psychology department that also does evaluations, often in tandem with the academic department, but they also do individual child counseling and family counseling as well. We have a speech department and uh, one of the programs that speech runs, it's called the Gateway to Language program, where we send a speech pathologist out to about 30 different preschools um, throughout Western Pennsylvania. And she screens about 1,200 preschoolers every year for speech and hearing deficits. The observation rooms give parents or other uh, professionals an opportunity to watch what's going on, which is also great for the speech pathologists because a lot of times they need children to watch themselves, you know, articulate different sounds. So the mirrors work um, well. Uh, then we also have this great space, which is our um, the village preschool at Lachlan Children's Center. December of 2010, there were five different uh, tutoring offices in here, but before that, it, it housed carriages and horses, and. When I was out here with the architect one day, the, we were talking about the windows because they all started up about four feet up off the ground, which was fine when it was adults and older kids out here, but you know, preschool kids, they would have been jumping up trying to look out the window. I said, I've always thought that it was really an odd thing. And the architect said, well, it was so the horses couldn't kick the glass out. Um, the cool thing is where those circles overlap. So the speech pathologist comes out to the preschool every so often and does a pragmatic speech lesson. And she's able, in a way that maybe the, the preschool teachers aren't aware of, to identify a child that might have a speech deficit or some sort of communication deficit. Um, likewise, the, the um, psychology department 
um, comes out and, and to the preschool and does lessons on feelings and that sort of thing um, in a way that you wouldn't get at another preschool. Or a child might come to us because he or she's struggling in school and because the tutor um, is in communication with our psychology department, we might find out that the problem is not an academic one. It's that the child's you know, grieving over the loss of a, a, a pet or a grandparent or divorce, something like that. So where those circles overlap, I think, is really where the meat of, of what Lachlan does. Originally, when we started um, collaborating, we really kind of worried about our turf, you know? We thought, well, if, if we're out there working with these other folks that try to bring kids in and, and do programming with them, we're gonna lose out. And the greatest thing happened as we got more involved with these other community organizations, we realized that all of us were doing better together than we were doing individually. Um, so a good lesson for preschoolers, for grade schoolers, or apparently for executive directors. All three buildings and the grounds are slated to come in at around $750,000. And um, we're right around 600,000. So we need that last 150 to sort of put us over the top. Somehow they trusted me when I said, look, I think that we should renovate and I think that we can raise this money. So I'm, pr I'm proud of them for having the, the faith in me and the rest of the staff to be able to do that. But I'm also proud of the community. I mean, $600,000 is a lot of money and we did it in about two years. They can go to LachlanCenter.org uh, we also have a really active social media, as you know. Um, you can like us on Facebook. Uh, we have a blog that you can get to from either Facebook or our, our website, or go to um, lachlancenter.blogspot.com. About 70% of our business is word of mouth, so we really rely on um, former and current clients to talk about us. Um, social media has become more and more important to us. We have a um, a young woman um, who came to us through, through the Pittsburgh Fellows Program. And since um, she's much more of a technology native than I am, she's sort of taken over our social media and has just done really great things for us. So look for us on Facebook. October is Domestic Abuse Awareness Month. Heather bravely shares her story of an abusive relationship. For more information on what you can do, please visit wcspittsburgh.org. I remember our first date like it was yesterday. We had so much fun. I didn't want the night to end at all. And from there, we were inseparable. And as time went on, we moved in quickly and the relationship went pretty quickly. Went from, you know, the first date to eventually living together within three months. After we were living together, things were still pretty blissful the first four or five months. And then after that, started to see signs of possession, signs of um, anger, um, different things that were a little alarming to me, but I was so madly in love that I just wanted to choose to ignore those signs. When they say the saying, love is blind, it truly was in my situation. So as time went on, um, he wanted me to basically be with him all the time. I didn't have any friends left and I had a huge group of friends whenever our relationship started. I was very close with my family. I had little contact with my family at that point. Basically my world revolved around working and around him. Then after that, there was a little bit of hair pulling, there was shoving pushing, things being thrown. That started to alarm me a little bit, but after it would happen, he just explained to me, you know, I have a really bad temper and, you know, you push my buttons. That was always what I was told. I pushed his buttons. So what I tried to do was I tried to be as perfect of a girlfriend as I possibly could. As time went on, I remember we went away um, on a trip and um, we got engaged. And I remember thinking, this might become my whole life, this you know, name calling, this abuse and different things. Like I knew it wasn't right, but then I thought to myself, well, if 
we got engaged, maybe the abuse would stop. And so we got engaged, that night was good. The next morning, he saw some message on Facebook or something, a guy said, congratulations. And um, next thing I knew, my head was being beaten off the floor of Mandalay Bay bathroom. The worst of it got to the point where, I remember this like it was yesterday, I was in the shower and he was mad because I went to the gym that morning. He was always mad if I did things for myself too. Um, and I was in the shower and I remember him coming home and I remember hearing his footsteps walking up the steps as I was in the shower. And even though I, I take really hot showers, the hot water was hitting my body. I remember just shivering in fear underneath that water thinking something bad's about to happen. And um, he ripped open the shower curtain and pulled me out by my hair and threw me across my bedroom floor. I was in the ER and the nurse came in and you know they asked what happened. I said, oh, I was vacuuming the steps. and. I have a feeling no one really believed that and um, I don't know if I wanted them to believe that either because it was one of those things I think I wanted someone just to say, you know, are you okay? Like something's not right. But you know, we, I stayed with him after that and um, I remember the doctor coming in and saying, you have three bulging discs in your neck. Did you know that? And I said no. And um, I didn't have three bulging discs in my neck before I met him. So I know that was from him, but you know, and I still stayed with him even after that. And um, needless to say, um, life went on and um, things got hard and finally we ended up going our separate ways. So I think there's this common misconception about women that are abused that they're um, weak and vulnerable and trust me I, I thought all the same things and you think that until your situation happens because it happens very slowly and basically I compare it to like a chisel on a rock. Somebody just keeps chiseling away at it and basically your self-esteem gets so low and your self-confidence and everything you ever knew about yourself just basically becomes nothing. I don't think you realize how great freedom is until it's taken away from you at some point in your life. So my life now is wonderful and I, you know, I definitely credit that to, you know, I joined a small group um, through the women's shelter and with Paula and um, it was amazing. Basically got my self-esteem and my, it, just basically myself back together. Join the Carnegie Library of Pittsburgh for an intimate happy hour featuring live music, good drinks, and fun activities. You can savor some wine, ask a librarian your most burning question, they're like fortune tellers, only not, and wind down your week. Maybe you'll even learn something while you're at it. Visit carnegielibrary.org slash after hours for tickets and more information on this event. I Made It Market's sixth annual holiday market features 80 plus local artisans. You can check it out Friday, November 30th from 5 to 10 p.m. and Saturday, December 1st, 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. at Bakery Square for a second year. Artists have been accepted and will be posted at imadeitmarket.com. November is right around the corner and that means it is time to give thanks. Are you thankful for what you have? Could you share some with those that need your help? Stock your local food bank or food pantry, pull out those old winter coats for donation, and check for volunteer opportunities. Pittsburgh Cares is a great place to start. Thanks for making our community a better place to live. Thanks for watching this episode of Unsung. Be sure to share it with your friends. You can check out our previous episodes and our Unsung Uncut series on pittsburghunvideo.org. I've been your host, Anthony Walker, reminding you, 
to keep it awesome, Pittsburgh. We'll see you next time. I'm gonna go enjoy nature. So I said I'ma crush it. Call me the golden boy, cause it shine whenever I touch it. Don't rush it, the flow comes naturally. Actually, the whole hood after me. Masterpiece, I outran a pace car.